So breaking news News that did not shock me But extremely Extremely pissed me off I'm not gonna lie Now I'd like to apologize in advance For any uh, noise in the background Because I am driving I am at work right now So Demetrius Andre The supposed boogeyman The man I've defended for a long time Claiming that Several fighters have ducked him Did the same exact thing that he has Accused several guys of doing to him Demetrius Andre, per Chris Mannix and uh, Mike Coppinger, will vacate his WBO middleweight title to avoid Janabak Ali Muhanalai. Janabak Ali Muhanalai was his mandatory opponent. Janabak Ali Muhanalai, let's just be frank about it. He was going to be Demetrius Andre's toughest fight of his career. This is a guy who's much better than William Williams. This is a guy who already has two former world. Champions on his resume Something that That uh, Demetrius Andre can't say <clears throat> Demetrius Andre does not have Two former world champions On his resume And uh, it's just puzzling It's puzzling Now I hope I hope He never gets a big fight In his career I am now Going to go To the extreme From one extreme To, an, to another I used to be a Demetrius Andre defender Now I will be a Demetrius Andre attacker This is going to be an anti-Andre channel I hope he never gets a big fight in his career I really do Don't want him to get that payday Like Canelo said Because he's not looking for legacy He's not looking for career He's looking for money That's it He just ducked The first meaningful challenge He's ever f- Was about to face his entire career now that just shows you the mentality behind some of these fighters that claim, claim and cry everyone is ducking. Everyone is ducking. No, sir, you are the one that's ducking. Demetrius Andre, you're a pussy. Yeah, I said it. Janabak Al Muhanalai was going to be the, your first meaningful opponent of your career. And what do you do? You fight him like a man? No. Let me just vacate my title. Fuck it. Gary Wilson Jr. was coming off a two-year layoff. A guy we attack always. A two-year layoff. Possibly, even though I don't buy it, possibly had a shoulder injury coming into the fight. And still fought his very dangerous mandatory opponent. And it's not like Johnny Bak Ali Muhannalai has killer power. No, he's just a master boxer. Which is Demetrius Andre's field so At least it's supposed to be Demetrius Andre is also a master boxer A very awkward fighter Who many people thought he could beat Canelo I don't think so The main reason is not his skill Skill wise he can hang with Canelo No problem but He fades down the stretch Big time And we've seen that already with uh, Billy Joe Sanders and Caleb Plant Guys that would outbox Canelo in spots But fade Like We've already seen this show before So I think it would be more of the same It just depends on what round he knocks He knocks uh, Andre Din at Round 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Who knows I just hope he does not get the Canelo shot I really do And he didn't didn't even want to fight Zach Parker For the interim uh, title At Super Middleweight I'm not really sure what He's trying to do with his career I'm not he wants the big money fights, but does not want to take fights that would big up his profile. This is why I get upset when uh, certain fans claim Terrence Crawford is ducking. Terrence Crawford didn't vacate his title when Sean Porter became his mandatory. No, he went in there and retired Sean Porter. Demetrius Andre chose the easy way out. Demetrius Andre would much rather vacate his title and look like a complete... I don't want to... And Solomon, again, he still is a two-weight champion, but still what he did was very cowardly. Very cowardly. And if there's a word bigger than cowardly, I would use it. He's been... His entire career... Just keep on saying, I don't get the big fights, I don't get the big fights, no one wants to fight me, no one wants to fight me. What are you doing now? The same treatment that you... We're criticizing your rivals for using against you. You used that against Johnny Buck, Al Muhammad. Like this reminds me a lot of Carl Froch, who throughout his entire career, K 
kept on attacking uh, Joe Calzaghe for not fighting him at the tail end of his career. But then, when the shoes were, were the shoes, I'm not sure. I forgot the saying. But when he was in the same situation with James DeGale, he vacated his tail and retired. Did not fight James DeGale. So these guys are so much hypocrites, man. They'll play the victim until they become the ones that are making other fighters into victims. And John Buck Alam Hanalai, maybe five, ten years later, is going to do the same thing. God knows. But Demetrius Andre, the guy who's been crying about the lack of opportunities throughout his career, gets an opportunity right at his doorstep. I know it's not the biggest money fight in the world, but still, it's a good fight nevertheless. It's a fight that will build up his legacy. It's a fight against the certified top ten middleweight. Uh, Johnny Buck Alam Hanalai. Very skilled fight. Johnny Bakal Mahanilai would be the toughest test in Demetrius Andre's career. In my opinion, without a doubt. I got Alam Mahanilai ranking number five or six at the middle division. And I've, I told you in my uh, previous video that there's a guy, I think he's a dark horse candidate for cleaning up the entire middleweight division. And this is Johnny Bakal Mahanilai. I think this guy is, is legit. I think this guy is going to beat. A lot of guys, if they fight him. Now, Johnny Buck Al Muhanalai is with top rank. The other champions are Gennady Golovkin, the IBF champion. He's with the zone. Royota Murata, he's uh, in J- based in Japan. I'm not really sure who he's with. And Jamal Charlo. Now, out of those guys, who, which one of you guys think is going to fight Johnny Buck Al Muhanalai? To be frank, most of those other guys are pussies as well, just like the Majors 100, including Gennady Golfkin. Gennady Golfkin, now, some people are acting like he's uh, Marvin Hagler of his time. Gennady Golfkin has ducked several fights. Several. They can't even be cut. Ever since he picked up the IBF title from Sergei Yervinchenko in 2018, he hasn't done shit. He's only fought Camille Shermada. That's it. What, three years now? He's only fucking Mil Shimano. Very disappointed from Gennady Golovkin. Gennady Golovkin, same guy who said, I'd fight anyone from 154 to 168, but never had a fight outside his weight division. The only guy, I guess, uh, he's never fought a guy bigger than him. He's fought several guys that were that started uh, less than middleweight. Gabe Rosado, Calibra, Canelo Alvarez, guys who are smaller than him, but he's never fought any guy bigger than him. I know I thought Glove can beat Canelo twice, but Canelo will always have the better legacy. Canelo moved up to super middleweight and beat every single champion as super middleweight. Even though I did criti- critique him for his timing, but he still did it. He went up to light heavyweight and beat Sergey Kovalev. He might even go up to cruiserweight and beat Olanda Makabu. Whether Makabu is the toughest cruiserweight or not, at least he's doing it. What is Golovkin doing? Did Golovkin fight Marco Hook back in like 2014-2013? Yeah, Marco Hook might not be the best cruiser of all time, but did Golovkin challenge himself? No, and he won't. He won't. Charlo, ever since he went up to middleweight, he hasn't fought a single elite fighter. Because even if we did fix Sergei Divinchico as an elite fighter, uh, I removed him from the elite uh, status or A-level fighter. Sicily got schooled by Carlos Adams. I just think that Jacobs, Golovkin, and uh, Charlo are a bit overrated. <laughs> but uh, he got schooled by Adams. And that's a guy you should beat. Patrick Shushera, a guy who's was just managed well to, to get a title, he uh, beat Carlos Adams. Sergey Divinchenko was supposed to be a tune-up fight, the Carlos Adams fight, but he got schooled in there. I had him losing eight of the ten rounds. Now I don't want to make this video too long. Point of the story is Demetrius Andre is a coward, and he just vacated his title instead of facing his mandatory opponent. This is crazy. This is crazy. How is he? Sp- why would he get away with this? How is he supposed to get away with this? It doesn't happen in other sports. 
in the NBA, if Lakers are like the first seed, I know Lakers suck right now, but let's say, for example, Lakers are the first seed, and then Warriors are the eighth seed. They can't just be like, I don't want to face the Warriors. I'm, I'm gonna go, go. I'm gonna go to the East and play. It doesn't work that way. Fucking bullshit. This, this is what sometimes makes me hate boxing. This is what makes me think maybe I might start covering UFC. Maybe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you guys agree with me? Just Andre did. Or are you guys like me, absolutely disgusted by the hypocrisy from you, Demetrius Andre, and Eddie Hearn? Like and subscribe and enjoy the video. And not just if you enjoy the video, this is a prime example of me showing my unbias. I made several videos, big enough Demetrius Andre, but once he does some bullshit, I'm gonna attack him. And Terrence Crawford as well. If Terrence Crawford vacates his WBO title when Josh Teller moves up to 147, Terrence Crawford, I'm not gonna be defending him anymore. I will also get on this channel and critique Terrence Crawford. If George Cambosis Jr. moves up to 140 and Josh T Taylor vacates uh, the WBO title because he would be mentored for WBO immediately, I would critique Josh Taylor. Same thing for Cambosis if Shakur moves up. Same thing. I would do that for any fighter. Any fighter that's coward, I will critique him. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like, subscribe, enjoy the video. Sadiq Boxing, out!